If you're not connecting with too many men and you feel like those you are attracting are not at your level to the point where you're starting to question whether there's still any high value men left, today I'm gonna to reveal five brutally honest reasons why you're not attracting high value men and what's something within your control that you can start practicing right away that within seven days will start shifting this for you so you can attract the guy you want. I would like to start by offering you my definition of a high value man because I think if we don't get the definition right, there's so much potential for pain, there's so much potential for following something that is not going to make you ultimately feel happy or fulfilled or seen or loved. My definition of a high value man is a man who is relationship minded and what does that mean? That means that he understands intrinsically in his heart that living life on his own is better than a life with the wrong partner but living life with a right partner is exponentially better for himself and for the world than living life on his own. Number two, that he is purpose driven. And my simple definition of that is that he has something, the North Star he's following, and that could mean a combination of his spiritual beliefs with service of some kind, with a mission he has, whether it's overtly clear or something he's discovering in the moment, but something that pulls him out of his shell, something that makes him go beyond his comfort zone and day in and day out reach for something higher, not necessarily just for himself, but for the greater good. He understands that there is no reason to come on this earth if you can't live it better than the way you started. So he's going full force into figuring out ways to make life better for other people, including himself. Number three is that he's empathetic beyond being ego-driven. He can be confident, but if this is one of those guys that doesn't value kindness and empathy above other values, you're going to suffer. You're going to get the brunt end of that. You're going to feel less emotional connection with him. You're going to feel less seen. You're gonna feel less understood. So in your definition of high value, and I hope that you include, before confidence even, kindness and compassion. Now, having talked about that, I think confidence is important. But the difference that I want you to think about is, I want you to think about a confident man who is as confident as he is humble. It is absolutely worthless to you to connect with someone who is super confident, but who doesn't have the emotional capacity to understand he's not a better human being than anyone else. He may have discovered something that makes him more money, or maybe he has some skill that allows him to be really good at what he does. But that means that there's many other areas of life where he knows nothing. And if he understands and is able to dive into conversations, dive into situations with that sense of, I don't need to ask for permission to be here, but at the same time, I'm cognizant that my way is not the way, it's just one way. That's the kind of essence that would be incredibly beneficial for you to cultivate in yourself and also seek out in a man. Next one is emotionally curious. And that means there's an openness in his heart, there's a curiosity, and that curiosity will drive him to find more reasons to be alive, more ways of connecting with others, more ways of connecting with you, more, more ways to understand you. If he doesn't have an emotional curiosity, then you're gonna have a relationship where you can check the boxes. We live together, we have a house, we have a car, we go to fancy restaurants, but something's missing. And the thing that's missing is his willingness and his hunger to get to know you. Now, notice that in my definition, I didn't include wealthy. In my definition, I didn't include tall. In my definition, I didn't include super strong. In my definition, I didn't include incredibly successful at a job. I mean, those things are great if you can find them in a guy, but not when you find them at the expense of this. And I think that part of the problem that we need to talk about right now is that in your quest for a high value man, you may be falling, and that's point number one, for a superficial definition of a high value man that doesn't take into account heart as much, that doesn't take into account service as much, that doesn't take into account kindness and compassion. I connect with so many clients who talk about a guy there's, there, head over heels about, someone they're giving hall passes to metaphorically, someone who is not as respectful as they want him to be, someone who's not as pursuant as they want him to be, someone who's not as, as clear in his intentions as they want him to be, or not clear at all, but they still stick around. The reason they stick around is because in their minds, they think he's a high value man and there are not enough of them out there, so I might as well change my standards and lower my expectations so that I can continue experiencing this greatness. And I know it seems slightly exaggerated, but if you think about men that you've fallen for, 
that you've considered high value that in the end ended up not being high value. It's probably because you valued something really, really high, whether it's his looks or whether it's his financial success or the, whether his career success or his clout, meaning he's somewhat known in the thing he does. And that level of seeking that energy has made you blind to the other parts of a high value man without which it doesn't work. Number two is because you're stuck in your lifestyle bubble. And I say this with kindness. Ask yourself a question. How often are you approached in life? And if the answer is I get approached a lot, not by the type of man I want, then that means that you haven't yet done enough to put yourself out there in circles and in situations and in classes and in meetups and in symposiums and in online forums where other men who are of the kind you're looking for congregate and stay. Now, if they answer the question, how often are you pursued or how often are you approached is not really or not at all, then you are stuck on two lifestyle bubbles. The first one is not going to enough places. There's no awesome guy who will know of your existence via telepathy and knock on your door, you open it and then a relationship starts. You're gonna have to get out there and get uncomfortable and create more time. And I know that time is limited, so you have to be willing to create more time and do it in a specific way, which I'll talk about in a second, so you don't waste it. But you need to put yourself out there in more locations and you need to be willing to the second part of the lifestyle change is you need to be willing to open more. You need to be willing to ask more questions. You need to be willing to make more eye contact. You need to be willing to exude a little bit more of that greatness inside of you instead of keeping it all within. The third reason why you're not attracting high value men is because you're not qualifying men properly. Again, if you see a guy that you think it's high value and you fail to ask the questions that you need to ask because you are afraid that he's going to give you the wrong answer or he's going to feel pressured, or if you connect with guys and you're not even sure they're high value or not, but you're not asking enough questions early on, what's happening is you are creating a projection. You're creating a story in your mind and you're starting to get emotionally attached and you're starting to feel more depth of connection, but you're still flying blind. You're still playing a Russian roulette where you don't know if there's a bullet on that thing or not. And the bullet on that thing means if the guy wants something different from what you want and you didn't take the time because you didn't have the courage originally or didn't create it to ask those questions, then you're wasting endless amounts of time with multiple men. And by the time that you reach one that might be a great fit for you, you've gone through enough pain where you treat him the same way you've treated these other guys. Meaning you feel like he's not going to be the guy, you feel like he won't do it for you, so you give it minimal energy and you create minimal results. Now before I go in through my last two steps, I'd love to ask you a question. Do you fully understand, if you're single, why you're still single? I'm not talking about superficial reasons. I'm talking about the core, the deep-rooted reason why you're still single. And if the answer is, I don't really know that I know the answer, then I'm going to invite you to take my free 60-second quiz that can give you the answer of why you're still single. And if you think, well, 60 seconds is good to be true, here's the reality. I've taken 12 years of connecting with women and helping them attract the relationship they wanted, even though before they connected with me, it wasn't happening, and figured out, okay, what are the common trends and blind spots that prevent women who are smart, who are beautiful, who are great catches, from recognizing the thing that's making them not create that connection ultimately. And I put it together into a quiz. And all you have to do is go to the page, uh, first page in the description of this video. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions and you'll have an answer to the question, what's the number one reason you're still single, but better yet, I'll give you a report that will share with you, based on your specific blind spot, what is the number one action you need to take if you want to reverse this trend and attract him in a matter of months instead of years. Reason number four is because you're not giving great men a first shot. And let's discuss why those that might be. Well, first of all, if your definition is slightly skewed and you're going for more of the superficial, that might do it. If you are not putting yourself out there in enough environments, that might do it. If you connect with men and you judge them too quickly, if you feel like the chemistry isn't there early on, even though it could develop later, if you feel like there's something about the guy that you don't fully understand, and instead of exploring it, instead of saying, I'm gonna take deep breath and get to know him better, you say, well, no, 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 I'm out. If you're using the same thing guys are using on you, which is the disposable left, right swiping, 
without giving it a first shot. I'm not saying give a first shot to guys who show up disrespectfully. I'm not saying give a first shot to guys that you feel, oh my God, he's repulsive. I could never connect with him. But if a guy isn't the end all be all the first time you connect with him and you don't really know who he is, give it a little bit more time and see how the extra questions, how the different environments, how the going deeper in intimacy, and by intimacy I mean uh, vulnerability, can shift the perception of you about what that guy is and make a better decision. And if the answer is, I'm, gonna see, I'm not going to see him again, make it for the right reason. If the answer is, I'm not going to see him again because my heart didn't explode quickly, then you're taking away opportunities that may never come back. Number five is your frustration, your burnout, the pain you've experienced, your slight cynicism are diminishing your magnet. When you've gone at this thing for a while and you haven't gotten what you want and you start feeling dimmed a little bit, you start feeling slightly cynical, you start feeling like, oh, when is this going to happen? And just one more guy, that's not who I want. And, it's, and, and you start going into this tangent where you feel, well, because it's not happening right now, when will it ever happen? That makes you less attractive. That makes you less exciting. That makes you less vibrant. That makes you less resonant. So before you rule out that the guy that you want is not out there, you want to rule out that you're not pushing him away with your energy, with your lack of eye contact, with your lack of enthusiasm, with your thoughts around what all men are instead of what some men are. I hope you get from this video this one thing. If you're not creating the connections you want, you can change this. You can change your perception. You can change the number of actions you're taking. You can change the locations you're going to. You can change the energy with which you connect with men. You can change the questions you ask of men. If you change one of those things, life will start changing. If you start making those shifts starting today, I can promise you seven days from right now, you'll have a different reality. Hope this is useful and helpful. If it is, it would mean a lot to me if you click like and subscribe to my channel. If you want to understand what's the number one asset you have, your number one magnetism attraction force that you're not necessarily looking at right now, that you're missing out on, then you want to go and watch this video right here.